The pin macro lets you ensure that uh, whatever you've created in there until it drops out of scope is not going to move in memory. And so now you can safely select on both of them. And even though they're um, variables, they're not compile time, they're not going to move. Select is fine. You won't get really confusing error messages. The error messages are getting much better now, by the way. A lot of the time, it actually tells you you need to pin this instead of something utterly incomprehensible. Um, but Takio provides a pin macro that makes it relatively straightforward to do this. You just have to remember to use it. And the compiler is going to remind you. So when you want to recursively call asynchronous code, um, this one tripped me up the first time I started getting into async. I wanted to see how it worked. Um, the first option there, which is a Fibonacci number, this is from the async recursion create example, will not compile because you're awaiting on yourself. The error message you get is actually pretty uh, um, comprehensive and large. Um, it fortunately tells you that you might want to try the async recursion trait. Um, so the async recursion create, create and trait sound too much like each other. And so if you add that to your dependencies in Cargo TOML, you can um, recursively call functions all you want. You just have to um, bring in the async recursion macro, apply that to the function that you want to, do, that you want to uh, recursively call itself. And you're still benefiting from lots of yielding. Each of those awaits every time is going to be yielding. So you're still getting wonderful uh, performance, even though you're performing a heavyweight async function. And if you're a function, if you come from functional programming, you probably use recursion a lot. And that's great. And the async recursion crate is the way to solve that problem. Um, one thing that I frequently do is I will have data coming in as a stream, and it's not quite the data I want. So I want to adapt it in flight. And Takio always calls this an adapter. It's a stream that takes a stream as an input, does something to it in flight, so one step at a time, mutates it, and outputs it as a new stream. And this remains relatively self-pacing because let's say you're feeding it as a result to a web browser. Well, the web browser is ultimately going to be running at the speed of the slowest item, which is probably the network. So each call to the next entry in the stream becomes self-pacing, working its way through. It's a great model to get um, just as much throughput as, you, as your customer needs. And so I gave you a, a nice little pre-made example of how to write one of these yourself. What this one does is I created a stream called to upper. It accepts a stream coming in of lines from a file, just makes them uppercase. But you'll notice there is, an, there is a lot of boilerplate here. I had to use a um, create called pin, pin project light. It's actually pin project, but I always read project. Um, it <coughs> does, it replaces a lot of really gnarly, gnarly, nasty codes that you'll never remember and have to look up every time with a much simpler that you'll probably still have to look up every time syntax where you can um, wrap you the thing you're creating, the stream, in a pin project up here at the top. When you create your structure, you mark the item that you want to pin with the pin macro. Um, again, you're indicating that. Um, because I'm relying on this, I need to know where it is. It mustn't go away. 